Okay, welcome everybody to our special meeting of council uh, pertaining to the 2018 to 2022 five-year financial plan for Monday, February 19th. I'd like to call this meeting to order and recognize that we are on the unceded traditional territory of the Hupetchesit and Sashat First Nation. I'd also like to recognize the presence of Freeman of the City, uh, Ken McRae. Welcome, Mr. McRae. Says he hasn't missed a budget meeting in 20 years. So that's great. Does he have new shoes on? I don't know. Do you have new shoes on there, uh, Mr. McCray? He's, he's. They're kind of hard to buy. <laughs> so when you find one, you want to buy them in bulk. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. Uh, are there council? We have an agenda in front of us. And I, are there any changes, any additions? If not, a motion to approve the agenda as distributed would be in order. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. All in favor? And I'd also like council, I'd like to acknowledge council that we have Councillor Washington with us on telephone. Uh, welcome, Councillor Washington. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We might have to put a microphone closer to you just to make sure we can hear, hear him. But as long as you can hear me, I guess that's the most important thing. <laughs> okay, Council, um, we have minutes from a special meeting of Council held on February 1st. Uh, a motion to adopt those minutes, please. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Is there a seconder? Second. All those in favor? You say aye there, Councillor Washington? Aye. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Carried. Council, we have uh, some correspondence from uh, Jerry Willarius about bylaw enforcement. Uh, we have a letter dated February the 10th providing uh, some views regarding bylaw enforcement and suggestions for consideration. So a motion to receive that uh, letter, please. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Is there a seconder? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor, with a comment. Okay. Um, at the end of this meeting, I'm, I'm going to be making a couple of motions about properties that we should be looking at, and that is one of them on the corner of uh, uh, Russell Street and River Road. Okay. And so I just appreciate the fact that Mr. Hilarious uh, sent us that letter and, and brought the attention of all of council to that property. It's been a problem for a long time. Okay, thank you. Uh, on the motion then, all those in favor to receive the letter? Councillor Washington? Carried. Okay, then, Council, that brings us to uh, our reports. And we have a report from the CAO on the previous years, and I stress years because he's going back a number of years, uh, capital budgets. So, CAO, uh, I turn this one over to you. Uh, your report's in a in, to, in response to a request from uh, council providing a comparison of amounts, amounts budgeted in recent years for capital works. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, prior to the last meeting and then certainly after the last meeting, a number of councillors asked that we bring forward some information about capital expenditures in, in budgets in previous years. So we're showing some data from 2011 through 2018, um, 2018 of course being projected. And so there's three graphics that I, are up on the screen. The first of the three is up on the screen now. So this one shows the, um, the, the total amount of uh, money expended each year on capital expenditures. So infrastructure capital, um, using those terms synonymously here. Um, and you'll see that the green portion, I think it's green, of the graph is, um, is uh, capital expenditures from sources other than taxation. Um, in that year, and the blue portion is capital expenditures from taxation in that year. And uh, so this, you can see there's some great variation between the years. 2014 and 2017 um, obviously have considerably more um, money spent on capital. Those two years were the years that we got the large grants for the uh, liquid waste management plan. So I believe it was 12 million in 2014 we budgeted for, and I think it was seven-ish in 2017. And so it makes those years quite a bit higher than the others. And if you were to extract those grants back out, they'd be more in line with the other, other years. 
Um, if we go to the next graph. So the next graphic shows the taxation increase on single family residential. Um, it's a portion of the res residential classification. And you can see that it ranges from 1% in 2011 up and down to um, just a hair under 3% in 2017. And we're on projection this year, well, we've talked about being on projection for a 3% increase, depending on what council does tonight and in subsequent meetings. And um, if we scroll down to the next one. So this one, uh, we'd spend a lot of conversation around the um, redirecting taxation um, revenue toward capital. And so this shows the um, graphic of, of the amount of capital expenditures coming from general revenue in each year. And you can see that it goes from 2011 um, at 1.3 million, uh, fairly steadily in decline, bottoms out around 708,000 last year. And then um, we were projected, we have potential to go, I believe it was 1.2 million this year, if all of the money in the um, on the options list went to capital and we're tentatively um, with, all, with all the motions that council has approved at the last meeting um, we're tentatively targeting if you were to go ahead with all those motions as they sit we would be spending just a hair over a million dollars on uh, capital from taxation this year so it's certainly in the right direction it's the direction we've been wanting to go it's not as um, as far as we'd hope to go this year but um, mr. mayor I can answer any questions I hope if you have so if you can just go back to the graph, uh, capital expenditures by year. Yeah. So when you put the two together, that's the total amount per, uh, that's being spent on what we would consider infrastructure, that's right? Yes. So it's not that we're just spending that tiny little, well, in this one it looks sort of purple, but in, in fact on the graph I'm looking at on my iPad, it's blue. Um, so it's that's not the only expenditure it's there's we're actually more concerned about the total expenditure is that correct well i'm trying not to have words put in my mouth um we're, we're concerned obviously about the total expenditure yes and um council has been interested in having in increasing the total expenditure um through allocating as many tax dollars as we can in each year so yes the total is what matters and our our approach has been uh, last year and this year has been to maximize the amount of tax money going there as well and you can see that for in 2018 for example that little piece of blue represents about a million dollars close to a million dollars okay thank you uh, Councillor McConnell yes mr. mayor um, as much as I oppose the um, increase in water rates uh, I think they're too high but the vote went through and so we have them and so those funds those monies are not going to come out of general taxes anymore water I think water bills are a tax of a form but that is money for water and sewer and so all of that now will be coming out of non general taxes and hopefully we've got enough rate now that we can say that rates high enough now that we can save from from those rates to do the work that we need to do so no water and sewer should be coming out of general taxes anymore but it's still the amount will be in there for doing uh, capital and, and uh, investment yeah I think that was the intention of council when we voted that we would effectively be creating reserve funds for the city to access when it when we have to make those decisions in the future if that's if that's the point you're trying to make that's the point I was trying to make for sure. yeah okay thank you any other comment council Okay, um, CEO, thank you for, uh, for doing that with respect to uh, showing taxes as well. Uh, I move we receive his report, Mr. Mayor. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Washington? No, nope, I'm fine, sir. Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Carried. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Council, that brings us next to uh, input and questions from public. Um, uh, we have a question and answer from uh, February 19th. Uh, City Clerk, I'm just wondering if you can just uh, briefly go over those questions and answers 
uh, particularly for people who may be listening at home? Um, to staff, and uh, we compiled them into the, the Q&A document. If, if you want me to read through them, I can. There's a couple of pages there. Uh, I'm not wanting you to read through them, but I'm just wondering if you can just give kind of an, a, a flavor of the kinds of questions that were being asked. And uh, uh, Certainly, Mr. Mayor, there's um, the first number of questions, probably the first one through seven, so probably half the questions. Um, are related to the um, proposed bylaw services um, expenditures, um, what comprises the expenditures, um, about the types of bylaw infractions that we have, are there statistics on those types of bylaws infractions. Uh, that's pretty much half of it. And uh, the other remaining questions are related to um, gas tax funding, uh, amounts that we've received in the past, are we on track to receive in the same amounts in the future, um, as well as uh, the gas operating agreement between the city and Fortis BC, what we receive for revenue from um, operating fees last year compared to, or the last couple of years, and are we expecting the same amounts in future? Um, that pretty much summarizes it, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. There, there's one uh, area in particular, actually there are two areas in particular that seem to be of, um, that I, I personally need to feel we need to clear up. And one is the question number five, there seems to be some confusion about where the $60,000 that we've been considering for uh, an electric vehicle, where that's coming from, how it's being paid for, and um, what is going to be, what we're proposing to use it for um, in 2018 or in this budget that we're considering. So I'm wondering um, either CAO or CFO uh, director um, if there's some comment that can be made on that. The, the reason I, what the confusion seems to be that some, for in some people's minds, it's a tax. It's an extra tax that that uh, the taxpayers are being asked to to pay. For but in fact, I don't think that sixty thousand dollars is an extra tax, is it? Um, the sixty thousand is coming from the carbon fund, which the city contributes to through its um, commitment to carbon neutrality, um, and we do get a carbon tax refund each year. <coughs> that's um, a percentage of the diesel and gasoline that we buy, um, and that gets deposited into the carbon trust, as well as the GHG funds. And so the, the money that's sitting in that fund can only be used for certain types of expenditures, am I right? That's right. And an electric vehicle is one of those types of expenditures? That's right. And then CAO, the, we're not actually considering putting an electric vehicle at the uh, disposal of the bylaw, the future bylaw department. We're using it in, in some other part of the city. Is that not correct? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. The, the intention is that we would bring the electric vehicle into our fleet and switch it out with, with a gas-powered vehicle that would be used by bylaw because um, bylaw has some electrical support needs that an electric vehicle wouldn't be well suited to, as, as you've known. And that's a gas vehicle that we already own, right? Al already in the fleet, that's so right. It's yeah repurposing something that's already in our fleet. Yes. Okay, and then the other point that I wanted to make, and I'm, I know that council knows this, but it seems to be some confusion out there, and that is the, the value of council attending large meetings such as the meeting in Halifax, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, which is a convention of 6,000 municipalities across Canada, and by extension, the value of Council going to the Union of BC municipalities or in fact any other convention or any other meeting that's highly valuable for us uh, in 2016 uh, some of us were in Edmonton at uh, attending a conference and at that particular co conference we found out about the opportunity for municipalities to apply a second time for water wastewater funds 
And then we had that reinforced when, the, when all of us went to the UBCM that following September. And it was because of that information that we were able to bring back and confirming for city staff that we actually got a grant of $6.85 million. So I'll say that again, $6.85 million. So that's a huge amount of money. And by council working together with staff, we helped to position the city where it actually could apply for that money. And it's, we would have been having to spend that money in order to f finish this, this sewage lagoon project anyway. So we got this really significant grant. It was the fourth largest grant to any municipality in British Columbia. Even the city of Vancouver got a grant of $24 million. So, it, you know, when you think about the size, we did exceptionally well as a city. It's a huge amount of money, $6.85 million. Councillor McClemon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I don't think we need to specifically apologize for attending uh, the conferences. Like you say, $6 million. And, and we do get an opportunity un under the present circumstances, I think that's a polite way of saying it, with the member of parliament that we have, who is very good and is very cooperative in helping us get these grants. And it, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air, I'm, in my mind, in, in the way we're able to do it. And we have in the past, uh, basically, uh, previous councils have almost ignored the FCM because it's federal, you know, and it's way out there, you know. But really, uh, they do affect us and always have affected us, and now I think we're getting more out of it, and it's a good idea. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Minions? Thank you. Um, back to the bylaw vehicle. Um, I'm wondering if um, a suggestion actually was made to me since we've been talking about staggering shifts of the new bylaw um, officers, um, is it necessary to have two vehicles if they're going to, if our goal at least is for them to try to offset as many shifts as possible? Is that somewhere we could possibly save and still um, provide a good service? Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll defer that question to the Director of Development Services. Well, council hasn't made a commitment to a second bylaw officer, so we haven't. I haven't gotten into details how operationally would they, would there be some uh, uh, chance where we, they would work different sets of hours? Yeah, I think we would look to do that, but for a, for a good portion of the time, we'd be wanting for both of them to be uh, available at the same time to to so they're not. So we're we're getting to more files than just one person at a time. I think ideally to make, to make without getting into great details, to get the biggest impact from that, to have each uh, staff person with a vehicle uh, that's equipped with a computer out in the field, would, we would get the biggest bang for our buck. So uh, on the front of it, I would recommend that we, if we're going to have a second full-time bylaw enforcement officer, that person should be provided with a vehicle. Thank you. Okay, anything else, Council? Okay, so then this is now uh, an opportunity for any input or from the public. Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize if I asked some questions that you've already discussed through uh, future meetings, but I wasn't able to attend many of them. Uh, my main issue I wanted to just briefly touch on is the bylaw department, the uh, future bylaw department. But uh, a question I'd like to know is our employee st status. Prior to our, our, our report that we received, uh, that $50,000 report that we got a few years back, how many employees did we have prior to that report coming out and how many do we have now? And more specifically, I don't know if it's high or low. I'm just, it, it's just information. I'm just curious. I'm not complaining about the, the, the numbers at the, at the moment anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. And I don't know. Uh, more specifically, how many managers do we have now as compared to prior to that report? Now that it's a two, three, two years old now, three years old? Uh, I think it was 2015, so it'll be three years, three this, years yeah. this year. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know, CAO, are you able to provide an answer now or you have to uh, dig into it a little bit? Uh, I don't have that information now, sorry. Okay, so we'll have to get the response for you, uh, the reply for you, Mr. Anderson. Okay, and uh, the, the, the only problem that I really have, I know we have to do something about the bylaws. I mean, uh, uh, one of the issues that I find a little disturbing is the consistent consistency in which the bylaws are enforced. And I guess in part that is due to the fact that we only have one officer. But I know of one case where they, they asked uh, one business uh, in Bird Street to remove some vehicles from the front on the city property and because there was a complaint it seems when there's a complaint there's action if there's no complaint there's no action and that is totally unfair because in this case three four houses down the road were in violation too and it doesn't take long to give them notice at the same time so uh, I don't think we've been using a bylaw officer that we have had to the to her in the fullest capa capacity. So I'd like to know, uh, what is a new manager going to make? What's the salary? I know that's probably been talked about. Uh, I think that was one of the re questions that was responded to. I'll just uh, refer to it. And you can see uh, approx approximately $85,000. The uh, total cost, it, when you include salaries and benefits, uh, approximately uh, 103000 and you always go by wage and benefit pack. It's 103000 The clerk? The city clerk? The clerk that will be. I guess oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm calling the position that clerk. Maybe I'm using um, the, the wrong terminology there. I'm. So I can't see this that from here. So I Mr. Mayor, we haven't broken down the. Uh, we didn't get a question on that salary piece, um, unless uh, Mr. Smith has it there in a previous report. I do believe we we had uh, the clerk here is approximately um, I thought it was in the in the options list uh, a half-time uh, administrative uh, or uh, bylaw clerk would be around uh, 38,000 for half position okay there we plus, go plus benefits yes I hope it's plus benefits. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you can get, uh, I would like that and other information when 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 uh, you can do that. Uh, I just want to make the other comment is I always when I cost out my the taxes for my city, I always cost out the water and sewer, simply because it's been taken out of the, the it's it's a tax. There's no question about that, and that should be referred to as that. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to bring this up at this time, but I did have a conversation w with uh, our CEO regarding uh, people op occupying, and I brought this up at the last meeting, uh, commercial buildings and why we haven't done anything about this. And my question that I touched on at the last meeting and I touched on with our CEO was uh, the reason why they're not, not being removed is because it's a civil matter. And it's also uh, a violation of our bylaws, and our by bylaws supersede any civil matter when it comes to, to uh, enforcing and not enforcing. I understand this one particular example that I gave the, at the last meeting. The person isn't living there now because the landlord turned the electricity off. I wish he'd turn it back on and, uh, and see what happens. Uh, but he was living there. As a, as, as, as a resident, and, and, I, and I, I'm not sure that we don't have a legal co course of action, and, I'm, and I don't think we're pursuing it. But I, th I think at times we, we look for ways not to pursue and enforce our bylaws, and uh, that's all I have to quit right now. I'm not convinced that we should be having that expenditure right now on, on, on four people. I think we're jumping maybe a little too far ahead. I think we should have gone a little slower. I'm not convinced that a manager should be paid $103,000 to manage four people. That's, that's, that's maybe a little late in the day to do much about it now, but it's not finalized, and I hope you will review it a little bit closer. 
well, maybe in steps. Okay, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, anybody else wish to uh, address council or anything to do with budget? All right, then seeing none, uh, council, that brings us to, for council review, um, the facilities operation, from the facilities operation supervisor, uh, curling club uh, request, we have a report dated February 7th advising that the Albany Valley Curling Club has requested council carry over a $40,000 grant commitment from 2018 to 2019. And uh, you'll, we'll note that in the CAO's budget options report, it also addresses this, uh, this funding. Um, before we move to receive it, uh, CAO, um, not sure if it's you that wants to just review this or if there's somebody else that's going to do it. Mr. Mayor, I can review this and then uh, we can deal with this issue later if you like. So um, the facilities operations supervisor has, has presented a report and attached to that report is a letter from the curling club. Council will recall that in 2017, the curling club asked the city to provide $40,000 in support of a grant application um, and uh, to replace a compressor, I believe. and. Um, Council approved that, and so that expenditure is in the draft financial plan. And the curling club now tells us that they were not successful in getting those grant funds, and they won't they won't have another opportunity until 2019. So they've asked us to support that request in in the 2019 budget. So we have some choices. We can leave the money. We can tax for the money this year and and hold it pending our support next year, or we can redirect that money this year and. Um, reconsider the request later or as a curling club is asked to approve it for next year so um, we can discuss this is in this item is in my report coming up so if you like we can receive the report from the facilities operations supervisor and um, address the issue a little later if you like okay thank you uh, councillor survey just one question to CAO uh, approving the carryover for the next year's budget is this going to assist them in any way for their future grant for next year do they need our approval before making that application? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Just just as their previous grant application, they had to have our prior approval. But they don't actually have to have the money in place. They just That's need correct. to know that we support it. They, the, the money now will need to be in place for 2019, not yeah. for 2018. That's correct. Okay. So, uh, Council, it would be my suggestion that we, we receive the report and then consider it a response to that in the context of everything else that we're uh, we're being asked to consider that would be my suggestion but you may wish to do something different councillor Sobey I'll make the motion that the report from the facility operations supervisor dated February the 7th 2018 be received is there a seconder Second, Mr. Mayor. all those in favor opposed councillor Washington in favor thank you carried Okay, council, um, that then brings us to the CAO's uh, budget options. Uh, we have a report that's dated February 14th. So we know what you were doing on Valentine's Day. Uh, providing budget options for council's consideration following the meeting held on February 1st. Um, CAO, I'll turn this over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So my report is up on the screen. Um, just as a little bit of background, uh, Council directed uh, in August of 2017 that the draft budget be um, developed with a similar, um, similar direction to the previous budget, which was um, to make efforts not to exceed 1% tax increases, and with the intention that we would, or sorry, not to exceed 1% operational increases where possible, and um, that our intention was, council stated intention was to um, tax at 3% as in the previous year. Um, so the, that's what the draft budget looks like. And um, we went through the, on February 1st, we went through the options list process and council gave tentative approval to a number of projects. And the result of that is that um, we've tentatively um, committed to projects 
in excess of a 3% tax increase, um, $400,000 in excess of that. So there are some options for moving forward. And one of those is, is allow taxes to raise, to increase beyond 3%. Uh, another option is to, council could selectively rever reverse motions made on February 1st to get closer to the um, a budget line that you're, or a tax increase you're comfortable with. Um, another option is you could reverse all the motions you made on February 1st and, and reconsider with a clean slate. And there's a fourth option that my report addresses, and that is to look for opportunities to free up some funds um, to get as close as we can to that 3% mark. Um, look into the, the draft budget and the options list to see what we can do. So that's what we've done, staff has done with this report. Mr. Mayor, I can speak to these items in this report at a superficial level, and then if council has questions beyond that, I would um, refer them to the managers at, in the room. So there's a, a few projects, um, a couple, pro three or four, I think, projects that we think we could, um, either we have new information about them as things have developed, or we think we can um, address them in different ways. And I'll just do an overview of them. One is the Argyle Water Main, 17th to 21st Avenue. This is a, a large diameter water um, pipe system that we've been wanting to replace for several years and we've been pushing it back out of the budget years um, year by year it's a seven hundred thousand dollar project um, we tentatively have six hundred thousand dollars budgeted from water reserves and we had 100 from general revenue which is taxation um, it, actually in reserves we taxed for that in a previous year so we've been holding that money and the 100,000 was for the paving and on further review we don't think that we need to pave the street curb to curb. Um, we'd only re only be repaving the portion of the of the street that we dig up for the um, the pipeline replacement, and we could as much as possible dig up in the boulevard, not in the street. And um, we looked at our bylaw on the water reserve funds and paving or patching, if you like, um, over a water project is a permissible expense from water funds. So we could reallocate that hundred thousand dollars in in general revenue reserves to other projects in the budget and we could um, fund that entire project it can go ahead in 2018 with with water funds at seven hundred thousand um, dollars and I, as i say if you have more questions on that i can refer to mr takma who's in the room uh, the next item is the curling club ice plant which we just discussed so uh, the curling club does not need our forty thousand dollars this year they've asked if they can have it next year so at council's discretion, we could repurpose that $40,000 this year um, that is already in the draft budget, and we could, council could either make a decision later about the $40,000 for 2019, or you can decide now to put it into the 2019 um, draft budget. In any case, either case, uh, that $40,000 is available to spend this year. Um, the next project is the multiplex chiller. Council will recall that you gave early approval in December of 2017 for this project our chiller is 17 years old and I'm, I'm told that um, that it's it's somewhere in the mid-range of the time to replace a chiller and, and staff can give you more details if you have questions uh, we, we went out we got early approval on that we went out with the request for proposals uh, the prices we received were considerably higher than we anticipated and um, due to, to the delays in ordering equipment um, we don't we're just not able to meet the window of opportunity that we had for um, installation so that was why we asked for early approval because we're trying to get this thing replaced in April when we had a bit of a, a slow period in our in our arena and because we've missed that window of opportunity um, staff have reconsidered the project and taken some advice from our our maintenance um, contractor and we now prefer to put that project into 2019 and um, seek early approval for that there's also some emerging new technology that we want to take a look at as well. So um, we would propose that if council wants to do that, we could free up $50,000 in general revenue and 125,000 in, in uh, carbon funds that would return um, back to that fund. And uh, another project that we could look at is the Grandview, Grandview Road Pathway. So you'll recall that council directed that $100,000 be set aside in capital reserves for that project and that, that our staff undertake the engineering um, for that and um, with a mind to try and get that work done in 2018. And staff would suggest that that council consider um, repurposing that $100,000 this year and consider whether you want to reconsider that path in next year or whether you want to put it in 2019 now 
and um, in either case, staff would do the engineering work this year in preparation for a 2019 build. And the last item is our gas tax funds. I don't want you to think we're hiding, hiding your money, but um, we hadn't fully expanded our available gas taxes. And there's a reason for that. Um, it's good practice to hold some gas tax funding in reserve in case one of our capital projects runs over and it gives us an option um, at council's discretion to allocate those, those funds. So we have $182,000 in unallocated gas tax funds and um, staff recommend that if council wants to take this course that you could allocate 111,000 of that into this year's budget. And if you were to do all of those things that I just described, that would free up $401,000 um, you know, for available funding for this year's capital, which would address that, that um, overcommitment, if I can use that term, beyond 3%. Um, if you were to do this, we would, it would enable us to do all the projects that you gave tentative approval of on February 1st, and it would still keep us at a 3% tax increase. Mr. Mayor, if there are any questions, uh, staff are happy to answer those. Sure. Uh, Councillor uh, Sobe, then uh, Councillor Elliman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to make a statement that before I left on holidays, this budget issue was really bothering me, and I was glad to see within my holidays in California and seeing a nice email from the CA or CAO indicating that uh, he's worked with staff uh, to try and ensure that taxes don't have to go up if they don't have to. I want to make sure that the public understands that there was zero intention by any of these councillors, which the one I spoke with anyways, of going beyond our 3% projectile. But the thing is, uh, a lot of people need to understand that a lot of us uh, on our platforms when we were elected is that we all agreed one thing is that we needed to deal with aging infrastructure. And we felt, I believe as a council, that we haven't done that much of a dent to deal with our aging infrastructure. And that's all we have for a community to survive is to deal with our infrastructure to make sure everything works. So pretty much I just wanted to thank the CAO and the staff, every city staff manager, uh, for coming up for that early present for me to, to be able to come back and meet our 3%. And uh, again, I want to extend thank you for your efforts and all your hard work. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Alamani, then uh, Councillor McClellan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, like Councillor Sobe, I, I think um, a huge amount of credit has to go to staff to be able to to go through this uh, budget and go through their, uh, um, uh, you know, what projects they have ongoing and, and trying to find these kinds of, of, uh, of savings and, and ways that we can make it work. The, the, biggest, um, the biggest goal, I think, last, last uh, meeting when that last motion was passed was to ensure that capital spending was uh, increased like we saw in our in the graphs earlier in the meeting um, you know we need to get back up to a sustainable level and that's been dropping over over much time so you know it's it has to be less about uh, um, you know adhering to certain numbers but being able to think outside the box a little bit and and trying to uh, uh, achieve a, a vision of, of building infrastructure so um, this is great work uh, by staff and uh, and I want to thank them for doing that Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor McClemmon. First, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move reception to receive the uh, report from the CAO. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Uh, Councillor Washington. Mr. Mayor, I'd like, oh, sorry. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we look at the options that CAO has given us. And before we re debate a lot of the uh, suggestions on the report, then we go to option number two, which is selectively reversing approval motions made February the 1st for some items on the projects list. I'd like to move that we do that. Okay, is there a seconder for that motion? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, discussion, council? The only, the only reason, Mr. Mayor, is I want to make sure we know what we're doing and before we get into changing things around in a big way, know what we've got to start with. Okay, in case we wish to go over anything that we've already 
decided. Okay, um, Councillor Washington, do you understand the the motion, or did you hear the motion? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. Thank you. Um, it is. It's possible that we wish to review any of that. Uh, we wish to review some of those. So. Uh, um, I think we need to make this motion, City Clerk, uh, 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 a recorded motion, so that it's it's clear who's voting for it, who's not. It's just the it's the it's the motion, just to re review them, or the the, the possibility. The motion is selectively reversing approval of motions made February 1st for some items on the projects list. Okay. Uh, Councillor Alamani. Do we need to do that in order to follow the recommendations from the CAO? Uh, I don't think we need to, but it's uh, there may be some other items in that, in that list uh, that some of us may wish to take off the list. Okay, so on the motion, Councillor McClellan? Four, sorry. Councillor Sobey? Four. Councillor uh, Paulson? Four. Councillor Washington? Four. Me, I'm in favor? In favor. And Councillor Alamani? In favor. There we go. Carried, motion carried. Okay, are there any particular items? Uh, Councillor Paulson. Um, from the minutes from the last meeting, um, the additional capital spending on 6th Avenue. And I was wondering if we could bring that back for discussion um, based on the motion previous. And the motion is that Council for City of Port Alberni approve items three, paving and four, storm. 6th Avenue Melrose to Bruce Water and Storm Sewer Capital Project at the budget cost of $280,000 for paving and $150,000 for water, storm, sewer, and capital. Okay, we so have a second here, I'll talk about it a bit. Okay. W what's the motion that we debated or we rejected? Or I've what? asked to um, reopen it to discussion. Okay, I'll second that, I guess. Okay. The <coughs> um, floor is yours, uh, Councillor Paulson. Um, there's a couple things, uh, and, and thank you, staff, for for your um, for your recommendations. And I have some concerns there too about depleting the gas tax fund, which kind of is a, a fund that we can go to if we have um, budget overruns in certain projects and stuff. But the um, the Melrose to Bruce Water and Storm project, and I drove the I drove that project um, a couple days ago and in particular from Argyle to Melrose. And um, that's a huge project, just from Argyle to Melrose. And I believe that that's probably about as much of that project as we're gonna get done this year. Um, from uh, Melrose to Bruce, I would suggest that, uh, not that we don't do it, but that we can put this into 2019 and do it, finish the project, in uh, starting in the spring of 2019 and do it properly. Um, that's a huge stretch of road uh, from, from Argyle to Melrose and um, I looked at it, it was pretty daunting. I think it's actually greater than, um, than the stretch from Melrose to Bruce if I'm not mistaken. But um, anyway, that, that's kind of my take on it. I, I think that this is a project that is well suited to two pieces, two parcels and um, could certainly take a huge um, a weight off our shoulders on on this um, on the budget deliberations here. Um, not that I'm saying we don't do the project. I'm saying that we we split it into um, the original part from Argyle to uh, Melrose is already um, passed. I think it was in the 2017 budget. I think, and um, the other one can go to 2019. That's just my suggestion. Okay. Any other comment, Council? Uh, Councillor uh, Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm 
absolutely not in favor of not doing, not funding the project this year. Um, I completely understand Councillor Paulson's concern that um, it could be done in two years or it, you know, should be done in two years. Um, I don't know if it should be done in one or two years and um, personally it doesn't really matter to me if it's done this year or done next year. Um, but I think the funding needs to be committed this year because if we wait and put it to next year so that we can do projects this year that are not infrastructure renewal projects, we're pushing the problem forward um, like we, I think, like we always do. Um, I think that we made a commitment to funding infrastructure in a sustainable way and that means committing the funding even if we are not able to do it this year. We need to commit the funds so that we're there. If we push it to next year, something else will come up next year and we'll be pushing something else to the year after. Um, and that wasn't our plan. So um, yeah, I, I really strongly feel that um, whether we're able to get this done this year or not, um, we should be funding it because we committed to $1.2 million in infrastructure renewal funding this year. Uh, Councillor Sui? Just to voice my agreement with Councillor Minions, um, I reflect on past councils every time it comes to budget time, they keep on pushing projects to the next council or to the next budget, but nothing's ever done. Again, this council has made a commitment to deal with the aging infrastructure. This project is did not just magically appear on the list, it's actually been there because it's recognized by staff to be warranted and needed to be dealt with. So I think we should move on to this project and uh, you know, put the money where our mouth is. Simply let's get the project done and deal with our aging infrastructure. Councillor McLennan and uh, Councillor Paulson. Yeah, um, already in, in the budget we've got uh, Argyle to Melrose I believe. Uh, going to be done this year, hopefully, uh, and uh, that's that's a long long stretch. And like Councillor Polson says, getting the rest of it done this year isn't necessarily isn't likely to happen. And and uh, I have to agree with that. And the other thing that I keep looking at and mentioned at the last meeting, we've got projects that have been left over from 2016, some from 2017. If we keep budgeting and putting the tax up and putting the money in the bank, I guess that's good and if someone wants to spend it someday, but we're not getting it done. So we've got to come up with a plan and maybe when we hire the uh, engineer or engineer person that we're looking at just now, that that will come come through. My, my personal feeling is if we tax the people of Port Alberni for this this year, we're putting their taxes up as well as putting up their water and most of us can maybe make it but there are some businesses that are on the edge and are having a lot of hard time specifically in the third avenue area with getting even customers in because of some of the problems and so they're they're on the edge and several have called me and told me they're going to have to close if they don't get what you know get some help get some assistance so I think that this year it, it's wrong to um, tax for another year. I guess that's what I'm saying. Uh, yes, it can be done and we could even put it in next year's budget today. But to tax this year for it, I'm opposed to that. Councillor Paulson? I wonder if I could just have a little clarification on this project to, um, with regards to funding. Um, the, um, the storm portion of this does would it would it come out could it come out of um, our uh, water and sewer reserve and could the 150 in paving come out of uh, gas tax there isn't room in gas tax to take the 150 we would deplete it go over and storm sewer does not get um, funded from the water Sewer or water. The sewer or water, yeah. yeah. Um, Mr. Takamata, with this particular project, um, do we have city capacity to do this project or are we going to have to put it out for bid? And what's that 
world like out there in terms of bids for municipal projects like this? Is it, are there, is, is there a lot of hunger for this sort of thing or is there a lot of competition for, for people, for companies that, uh, that do this kind of work? So would it be safe to say that when people are really busy elsewhere that they, the bids that they put in tend to be a bit on the high side? Generally speaking, yeah, that's correct. And so would it also be f fair to say that it's possible that the amount that we have set aside to do this project might not be enough to cover the bids? So would it also be safe to say that if we were doing the engineering on this entire project but bidding on half of it that we would have a slightly better idea of what the total costs are going to be when it comes to setting aside money and maybe taxing part of it in 2018 and part of it in 2019? Would that be safer that way? Mr. Mayor, on, on a point, could maybe everyone use the mic so Councillor Washington can hear? Councillor Washington, can you hear me? Yes, sir, no problem. Can, can you hear? Can you hear? Uh, can you hear Wolf Takama? Yeah, I can hear Wolf. Right. Okay, thank you. Do you want me to repeat the question? I'm not sure I followed the question. Okay, so what I'm wondering is if we put, because we're going to have to put either part or all of this project out for bid because our staff is so busy completing projects that they didn't get to in 2016, 2017, and now the other projects that we're laying on to them for 2018, we're gonna put that up for bid because it's a big project and beyond our capacity to do with, with the staff that we have, right? So would it be safe, would it be fair to say that in, in within the context of our budget for 2018, it is prudent it would be more prudent to, to um, attempt to get the project to Melrose, from Argyle to Melrose done, and the entire engineering done for the, for the whole project from Argyle to Bruce, but only bid Argyle to, to Melrose, and have a little bit more certainty in terms of the costs, and then we would then have a better idea of what the costs are gonna be from Melrose to Bruce. Would that, I mean, I'm trying to get a, a more complete handle on what it is that we're taxing the residents of Port Alberni for. So is the answer yes or no? <laughs> I'm not sure it's a yes or no answer. <laughs> it's a maybe. Well, that's what I'm asking for because I, I, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is to make sure that we understand to, for the taxpayers what it is that we're asking of them. And it's not that anybody's questioning whether or not the project should be done. I, what I'm trying to get to is 
how do we gather that money from taxpayers? Do we gather the entire project now and ask for a million dollars from the taxpayers when we, in fact, have no capacity to even know exactly that it's going to cost a million dollars? What if it's going to cost a million two or a million five or a million six, whatever it comes in at? What's, what's most accurate for taxpayers? Because in terms of criticism directed at city councils, and it doesn't matter where they are, whether it's here or Vancouver or Toronto, it's always, you guys don't really know what the costs are. All we have to do is look at the Blue Bridge in Victoria for a great example of that. So, so you know, let's, I'm trying to be fair to taxpayers. I'm trying to be as accurate as we possibly can be to taxpayers, because I don't want to be taxing for something that we really have no capacity to even get to in 2018. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't, right? right. For, for every circumstances. Um, so, so there's some uncertainty, as you, as you say, as to what the actual cost will be, right? And how that, how it's scoped out will have a, have a large bearing on, on costs in the end. Um, again, some of those decisions could be even made to, to this point, right? But it seems prudent to me not to bite off more than we can chew, as it were, in, in 2018. It seems prudent to me not to go to taxpayers and say, look, we love this entire project, and, and we would, uh, we're committed to the project, but we don't want to tax for 100% of it until we're clear in terms of those those costs. That's my point. So let's get the design rolling for the whole thing. Find out what the exactly. What the let's are. get the whole, let's get the entire design done. Yeah. Bid for half of it, then bid for the other half, and then we'd have a clear picture of what our expenditures are. I'm trying to be prudent. I'm trying to make sure that we look after the people who are actually putting the money into the ground. And still get the project done, and still get the project done of course. Yeah. Okay. CAO, you look puzzled. Mr. Mayor, I, I, um, sometimes I get myself in trouble when I start trying to understand the engineering and things, and, and oftentimes staff put me in my place. And I, I don't know that staff feel comfortable trying to um, speak truth to power to council. Um, this is a big project and we're gonna contract this out because we don't have the capacity to do it. Um, so it's not a matter of we don't, we can't get to this. We're gonna get it engineered and we're gonna put it out to tender whatever scope council funds. Um, all of our, the product in our pipes run downhill and they all run downhill from Argyle down to Melrose, so that, that direction. So if we engineer the whole thing, we, we chunk this up on a spreadsheet, this project, because we didn't know that we could afford the whole thing. And we're, we're telling the neighbors on 6th Avenue that we're gonna try to pave that, that worst part up on the top of the hill around Angus first. But really, that's the project that should come second. So this is what I've started to understand from works and engineering, is that if we engineer the whole thing, we should be building from the bottom up where the pipes connect. And if we're only going to build half, we should build the bottom half first and the, set, the top half second. But that means leaving that, that worse pavement for another year, and those neighbors have been waiting for that to get done. We could, I understand, um, do the top, the uphill half first, but then we might not be able to connect. This is where I get lost in the details. We might not be able to connect all the pipes to the houses. So we might have to go back the next year and dig them all up again to reconnect them. Because if we did a project up the hill, that doesn't actually connect to the bottom of the hill, then we're gonna to have to leave some pipe dormant in the ground. And I, I'm way beyond my scope, but I know I'm beyond my scope. And I'm suggesting to you that staff might not be telling you that you're beyond your scope as well. I think staff are telling you that if you provide the money, we'll tender this thing and we'll contract it out. And if we're way off on the budget, we'll come back and tell you we did our best, but we couldn't get it done. Okay, so if we, then you're saying if we're going to fund part of it in two, uh, 2018, and the other part in 2019, because that's 
the available money or that's then we do the bottom part first I mean it, that might be and, and I think that's an engineering decision um, to tell us which if we're only going to build half of it because we do need to engineer all of it this year if we're only going to build half of it it might not be the part with the worst pavement it might be the downhill side so you might be saying that really we don't know how long it's going to take to get the engineering done so we don't really know when we would even adequately be able to begin the project or frankly properly price the project we think that um, we can get it we can get it engineered by a contractor and built by a contractor in 2018 okay the entire project from Argyle through to Melrose or should I say Melrose to Argyle I we mean, think, Bruce, Bruce to Argo. We think we can get bids on, on the entire project. Whether we have enough money to do that entire project, we won't know until we test the market to see what the bids are. So okay. I guess the other question is, yeah. when, count, when staff came to us with the proposal initially, mm -hmm. their first part of their proposal was Argyle to Melrose. Mm -hmm. So if they really meant that it should have been Bruce to Melrose, why didn't they give us that one first? That's a good question. Is it because we don't have an engineer yet? It's because we didn't think we had enough money and we're trying to get to the pavement that is, that is failing so badly on Angus Street. So we thought we would build that out first because of the pavement, knowing that we wouldn't be able to connect the pipes until later. That was, that was, the pavement's been driving that as a priority. Yeah. At, and if you look at the um, Coal Creek project, we've been building up from there. And so the natural progression would be to follow that build up up the hill. And now we're talking about jumping up the hill to do a paving project which has become the priority even though the pipes aren't built up to there yet so i'm, I'm way past my uh, capacity to speak on engineering here no but it makes no sense to put the icing on the cake before you've actually built the cake so let's get the cake built first and then put the icing on top okay. so okay councillor sovey and then councillor washington or councillor uh, mcclemon and councillor washington if you have a question is Good opportunity for you. Okay, Councillor Sui? Uh, I'll defer my question to uh, okay, Councillor Alamani, who's been waiting. Councillor, sorry, Councillor Alamani, uh, Councillor uh, McClemon, you had a point? Uh, no, uh, let Councillor Alamani have his okay, say Councilor first. Uh, I, I do have several points, actually. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we're kind of getting lost in the weeds here. Um, I think. Um, and we're, we shouldn't be defeating ourselves or our staff or the city or whatever project. The project is really, uh, it's not the issue. The issue is about capital investment. Um, we've been pr provided a, a plan by our uh, CAO and by staff um, to avoid the rumored 4%, 5% increase that came out of the last meeting. So. I don't know why, and I'm now regretting that I voted for reopening this. I knew it was a bad idea. Um, so, so here we are. We we have a plan in front of us from our from our staff that avoids that uh, that three percent. In complete honesty, uh, we've gone from you know an overage of four hundred thousand um, dollars down to zero. If we if we uh, uh, added back in the gas tax so that we weren't running out our our um, reserve there then you know we've gone from over 400 uh, over our uh, our initial uh, target to uh, about 186 so less than half so you know what that's that's called adding adding revenue back into our capital infrastructure um, and I would be okay with that that said we can have that debate, but I think we are we've really gotten lost in the weeds here So I, I would hope just that we defeat the motion um, and move ahead with what we have from staff which is to um, Do what needs to be done to find the money in the budget to uh, to fund the projects that we thought were important in the last meeting and I'm sure are no less important this meeting if one project doesn't get finished that's not um, that's not really the issue. The issue is investing in the capital infrastructure and that money will be there for another project that will be inevitable in the future. Um, it will always be needed. So um, let's not get too hung up on one project. Yeah, Mr. Councilor Mayor, Clement. 
the more I listen to this, the more I think we shouldn't be voting for any of Sixth Avenue. We don't know what we're doing. Uh, and uh, I agree with putting the money in that we've already agreed to and have staff or our new engineer type that's getting hired, hopefully, uh, come up with, with how, how to do it and, and putting out bids. Bids can go out uh, for the total job in stages. That, that, that would be the same prices and that, that would probably give us a better chance of getting a, uh, a contractor. However, the, the more I've sat back here and listened to, to the conversation, and I think you're right, Mr. Mayor, uh, we, we really don't know uh, anymore, and I'm not blaming staff because, like our CEO said, way out of uh, competency and out of their league. And so let's get the individual here in the league and, and get her information or contract out to an engineer or something because we don't want to be taxing for something we really don't understand. Okay. Uh, Councillor Councillor Sauvé? Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just getting frustrated right now to, to, to be honest with you. You know, we're meeting the requirements that we set out at the 3%. We're not ha asking for any higher taxes. We had staff that's been working so hard in meeting our goals, we met this goal of the 3% tax and we're dealing with their aging infrastructure. For us to go back on this whole project, which needs to be done as a whole project, is going against everything we wanted to do as uh, elected officials for our city. Uh, I do trust the staff when they come out with these numbers and, uh, and I don't question for a councillor here to sit to say that we don't know where we're doing, it's because we're relying on staff and professional staff that knows what it's all about. So let's put some trust in the staff and follow this, approve the project. And if it comes out that the project is just been overbidded and you know the, the project has blown up the budget and all that, so be it. We're here to live within our means. We'll just back down from there. But for us to not accept the whole project at first is uh, going backwards just like any other uh, councils have done in the past. Uh, I'm against that. I think we need to move forward, move on a project. We're prudent. If the project is over budgeted, we'll deal with the situation then. Simple as that. Councilor Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am really proud of what our council has done with our water and sewer rates. Um, the increases have not been easy, and I think the community um, has had a, a hard time with them because they are. Um, it is difficult to constantly have increasing rates. Um, but I think what the community understands is that we made a commitment with those rates to fund our infrastructure um, in a sustainable way. And all of those funds that we collect are not being expended each year on projects. They're being put into reserve so that the, when the projects need to be done, when it's the right time for those projects, the money is there. Um, that is what our council has talked about doing with our infrastructure funding and that's not what we're doing if we reverse this decision. Um, if we reverse the decision to fund this portion of the 6th Avenue project, um, that will put our capital or infrastructure renewal funding from taxation at $291,000. Does everybody on council realize that? $291,000 would be the amount that we would be spending on infrastructure renewal from, from taxation. Um, the lowest we've ever spent on infrastructure renewal was what we spent last year, as far as I understand, which was $708,000. So this is not the direction that we committed to go. Um, I think this is far in reverse. And if we put this project off until next year because we can't complete it that next year, I don't agree with that, but I just want to make sure that everybody on council really understands how little we are spending on infrastructure renewal. The longer we put it off, the more expensive it's going to get, and my generation is going to have to pay for it down the road, and my kids' generation is going to have to pay for it down the road, um, because we are not adequately funding it. So it doesn't matter if it gets funded done this year. We need to put the money aside this year like we do with our other infrastructure. Okay, you can actually see in the CAO's report that the 
we're actually spending significantly more on infrastructure than 200 and some odd thousand, so it's not. Not, no, we're not if we take that. We're talking about taking away from what's in that report. And what's in the report is not just infrastructure renewal, it's creation of new infrastructure, which comes with a cost down the road to maintain. So it's not maintaining what we already have. Out of what we have right now in our budget, the million dollars, and I'm not saying it's not important spending, but 721,000 of that is infrastructure renewal, main maintenance, and replacement of our existing infrastructure. The rest is creation of new infrastructure, which is a very different thing. It's still important, but it's a very different thing. So if we take this money away, we're down to about $300,000 of maintaining our current infrastructure. Which is on top of the $6 million we're already spending. Um, okay, Councillor Paulson. Um, and you might not, we might not be able to answer this question right now, but um, I'm just curious, uh, what is budgeted at this point in time for Argyle to Melrose? I'm just, I'm just kind of curious what we've got set aside for, for that. And that was, that was from last year's budget, right? It was in the main budget. It's in the main budget oh, okay. already. Yes, okay. So why isn't this in the main budget as well? Because it was an option. So not sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it would take a bit of time to pull it out of several lines. Okay, if no. you want to wait, Director Roth will we'll add those up. It's Some of it's in storm, some in sewer, some in water, some in paving. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, okay. Councillor Washington, did you have any uh, any questions or any points you want to make? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just wondering if we approve the CEO's recommendations as it sits and the budget as it sits, are we going to be taxing at three percent? Um, yes, more or less. That's thank we you. we would be we would be achieving our goals in terms we'll of the. Achieving our infrastructure promises plus we would be achieving those. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. So, um, not sure. Director Rothwell? Okay, for um, paving, it's 500,000. Storm is 400,000. And then water is 262,000. And sewer is 100,000. And that's the Argyle to to Melrose. To Melrose? Yeah. Sorry, could you just do that one more time? Paving is 500,000. Yeah. Storm 400. Yeah. Water is 262,000 and sewer is 100,000. 100? Yes. So it's 1.2 million dollars. Yeah. So the the first sort of half of the project is 1.2 million. Or Roughly. Yeah, it's 735 meters, I think, and the other yeah. is about 400. And then the other part of it is whatever, the, the 430,000? Yes. Okay. Well, that's a good deal on the second half. <laughs> Councillor McClemmon. Yeah, um, I'm not sure where all these numbers are coming from we have a councillor telling us we're only spending 700,000 or 1.2 million on one job um, so uh, uh, and yeah I know that those numbers in there and I really haven't figured out the whole budget because of the way it was presented and I haven't questioned or argued about it but um, I personally am not in favor of cutting out some of the things that are in the uh, CAO's recommendation to cut out to get down to our our numbers but you know we've had a discussion uh, I, I personally am, am in favor of budgeting what we have in the main budget for 6th Avenue if staff and engineers say it's got to be started at a different corner than the one we were voting to start it on so be it I don't think anyone's going to stand up and down and spit and say it has to start at Argyle or start at Mar or start at where's it ending I don't know Bruce but uh, my, my feeling is that we are have a fair amount of uh, money in for infrastructure we want to get it to a point where we can put more in if we keep 
taxes to the limit, we're not going to be able to do that. And I, I think uh, this council, uh, most of you, when you came on as, as new councillors, had, had a really good idea to keep it within a limit and this, this term keep the taxes down low so that we can save a bit of money, put some aside, and come back. And we haven't put a whole lot aside, but I think we have an opportunity to now. So that's all I'll say. I'm going to vote for the motion, and that's that. In fact, I'd like to call the question. We've been talking about this for an hour. Okay. So my so, understanding. So am I mistaken? My understanding was that council was reconsidering the previous motion, which is on the screen right now. So are you considering that motion? We're, re we're on the motion, which is to reconsider. You're reconsidering that motion, so you're going to vote on that motion that again, is my understanding. That's what I think you told me. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. And, if, and if the numbers that were given are correct, it means we're still 1.25 million going into Sixth Avenue. Yeah. However, that's allocated. Whether it's the south part or the north part, still 1.25 million. Uh, Councillor Allen. Thank you. Just so I'm super clear on. The motion that we're voting on, our, so we're voting on the motion from last time. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, okay. it's, it's a reconsideration of the okay. previous motion. So what you're going to vote on right now is the motion that's before you. That's that council approve item three paving and four storm Sixth Avenue Melrose to Bruce Water and Storm Sewer Capital Project at the budgeted cost of two hundred eighty thousand for paving and one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar one hundred fifty thousand for water storm sewer capital. Just to add to that, um, just for my own information, for recon reconsideration of a motion, don't we have to reconsider it at the next council meeting? This is the next budget meeting. It hasn't been acted upon. Okay. And I think that um, it's in I'm accordance sure with our- I'm not sure if it was a council or a budget or did that matter or did it have to be the next actual meeting? I think this is the next meeting where we've been considering budget. So it can be considered, I would say quite clearly, as a, as a motion to reconsider. Okay. So, so just to finish my thought um, on that motion, then I would vote in favor of it. Um, again, because we've gone through this process, I don't want to be here for three hours going through the process that we went through last budget meeting. Um, I would very much prefer that we instead vote for this and then vote for the motions that the CAO has put forward um, that would avoid the tax increase. Okay, then uh, on the motion to reconsider this, um, I'd like to make it a, a recorded motion. Okay, uh, Councillor McClellan. Just before I say my vote, we are voting on that motion, that not a motion to reconsider and then start talking again. Right. You're okay. considering you're considering the motion that's there that's and right voting there. on it again. I, yeah. I am opposed. Councillor Sobey? I am for. Councillor Paulson? Opposed. Councillor Washington? I'm for. I'm opposed. In favor. In favor. Okay, the, the motion is defeated. No, so it's scary. scary. Sorry. Thanks for letting me talk for you guys. <laughs> okay. Then, council, that brings us to the next uh, project. I mean, the next part of what we need to consider, uh, which are the uh, CAO's uh, recommendations. And uh, I suggest that we probably take them one at a time. Then we're really, really clear on where we want to go. Unless somebody has a different matter. Okay, so let's take the, the first one. Um, 
the art the water main Argyle the seventeenth <coughs> to twenty first. I'll move that the Argyle Water Main seventeenth to twenty first Avenue project be approved for two thousand eighteen with a public allocation of seven hundred thousand dollars from water reserves. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Councillor McClellan. So what does that now do? Yeah, I'm, I hate to point it out, but it's another whole bunch of thousands of dollars in in uh, infrastructure that someone said we didn't have. But what is this now? Is now it's going to be seven hundred thousand dollars? This hundred thousand dollars is that now not there because it's now finally coming out of the water? Or we change our mind or what happened here? So uh, just. Question, CAO, in terms of that little blue piece, does it change the size of your blue piece? If, if this is approved? Or does it change the green piece? It changes the green piece. For, okay. Um, it's $100,000 that we can allocate to the water fund rather than the general fund because okay. it's a patch paving rather than a sidewalk to sidewalk. <coughs> I just care about getting the project done, but it's, you know, I'm kind of visual. Uh, Councillor uh, Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, could I just confirm when we say we're patching instead of paving, um, had we originally planned to pave the whole area? I'm going to defer to Mr. Tackman on that, but I, I, in discussions I've had with staff is um, that, well, my understanding of it is that we always intended to patch, but we didn't know that we could pay for that with with water funds, but that's my perception, but is that fair, Wolf? That's correct. Yeah, okay. That's great, thank you. And it was only when we started to go through line by line, quite frankly, to see where we could find some of these funds that we started to um, look a little closer to see what we could put into which accounts. Okay. City Clerk, can we have a recorded motion on this? A recorded vote, sorry. Um, Councillor McClemon? Four. Councillor Sobe? Four. Councillor Paulson? Based on the previous motion, four. Councillor Washington? In favor. I'm in favor. Councillor Minions? In favor. Councillor Alamani? In favor. Motion's carried. Now we have the next motion um, the Curling Club Ice Plant Project funding. Uh, Councillor Sobe? that the Curling Club Ice Plant Project funding $40,000 be included in the 2019 as part of the draft 2018 to 2022 five-year financial plan. Is there a seconder? I'll second it in that case. Is there uh, any discussion, Council? Councillor McClemon? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with this one because it's something we, we told them we would do for, for the club, and I don't think it's costing us a lot of money, but if they get a grant in October, which I think is when they applied, or sometime October, November, and ask for an, a, a, an early bid, if we leave the 40,000 there, and if they need it, it's there. If they don't need it, it goes back in the budget. So I, I'm opposed to this one. Okay, uh, Council, I think this is exactly what the Curling Club is asking for. Uh, CAO? Mr. Mayor, the Curling Club has asked that um, that we put this into 2019, that you approve it now for 2019. So the motion you just you've moved in a second, it says delete it from the plan. And if you would like to approve the Cur Curling Club's request that this be in 2019, I would ask that you make a motion immediately following this to say put this in the 2019, and that'll enable their grant application. Sorry, is that there? It's not there. Is that it be deleted? It says the motion be included in 2019. Oh, is that right? I'm reading my, my report. As is different. part of the draft 2018 to 2022. I'm sorry, part. I'm reading an old draft of the report. Perfect. So, so you're there. This is exactly what they're asking for. Yep. This motion, this suggested motion is exactly what they're asking for. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, again, City Clerk, I want to have a recorded vote on this. Uh, <laughs> Councillor McClemon? Opposed? Councillor Paulson? <laughs> He's still in Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Councillor Sobe? I'm in favor. Thank you. I, I would have come to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in favor as Councillor well. Paulson? Councillor Washington? In favor, sir. I'm in favor. Councillor Minions? In favor. And Councillor Alamani? In favor. Motions carried. 
Okay, and uh, the next project about the multiplex chiller. I'll read the motion that the multiplex chiller project be deleted from the draft 2018 to 2022 five year financial plan. Is there a seconder? Second, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Um, any discussion? Councillor McClemon? Yeah, I, I'm not sure I'm in favor of this at all. Uh, we had a presentation from the director of Parks and Recs and threatened us with something that happened in Fernie. Um, where are we at? I, I, I don't like delaying these things, if it's safety. Okay, Mr. Mayor, if I may walk you through the, uh, the elements of the project. Um, just to Councillor McClemmons' uh, point, this, uh, we're not in a situation at all uh, as Fernie. Um, so first of all, when we first went, uh, before we went to the RFP process, we uh, consulted with our uh, refrigeration uh, consultants and the number that we were predicting when we initially uh, prepared the budget, um, that same outfit is no longer quoting or providing bids on that chiller. So now we're talking apples and oranges. So when the when we went to RFP, we the the bids came in somewhere between 75,000 and 175 over what we predicted. Again, we're looking at, at two different types of chillers. Um, touching on the timing, uh, as CAO Ply mentioned with the, uh, with the delivery timing, so it's a tight window to begin with. Once, as part of the bid process, those, uh, those suppliers indicated there was somewhere anywhere between 12 and 40 weeks out in delivery. So. Um, it's easy to, to look at a calendar and say we're going to run out of, out of any opportunity, even in the event that we, we purchase that chiller the day that, that uh, the initial uh, early budget approval uh, came to be, we would still miss that timeline based on the manufacturer. Uh, regarding technology, so the, this emerging technology that, that uh, CAO Ply mentioned uh, is just that, is emerging, that when we, we initially went to, went to the RFP process, we weren't aware of this technology. And so so um, based on failure, which uh, Councillor McLevin will miss out on on this portion, um, the current uh, chiller is 17 years old. And so it's, it's original to the building. Uh, we confirmed that the expected life, uh, lifespan or useful life of this chiller is somewhere in the 15 to 20 year range. Uh, so right in the middle of that replacement. That said, uh, when we did meet with or discuss with our uh, supplier, he indicated that the only catastrophic failure that, he's, that he has seen on this product was on a brand new chiller 25 years ago that had a failure. So there is no reason in my mind why we would expect any sort of catastrophic, catastrophic failure. Uh, in the event of, of a small failure, we would expect pinhole leaks that we could uh, weld on site that we could save our ice season. So it doesn't mean that any sort of failure results in automatically losing our ice season. Um, is it possible? Of course it's possible. Uh, that opportunity is slim to none, I, I would expect. Uh, in addition, we will uh, install a pH sensor uh, on the brine as another preventative measure. So we've got to know that in the event that any of the brine is contaminated by the ammonia, we would be able to, to monitor that as we go along. So that's a, a measure we can take now just as another prevention uh, before we look to replace uh, in 2019. As far as the next steps uh, would go, similar to when we're talking about other large scale projects, my recommendation would be that we cost it out this year. We would use operating funds to cost and design the project and then uh, I would return to council and provide an updated report in 2018 for funds in 2019. So as it's indicated here, this would free up $50,000 uh, in the 2018 for other capital works, and then the $125,000 would then return to the carbon fund. Uh, and in future, we would go to a tender process as opposed to a bid process, so this or a, a, a request for proposal. So in other words, with spending the dollars on engineering, costing, designing this year, we can, of course, go into a much more stringent uh, tender process, which is very specific, and we would be able to say with utmost confidence what those specific numbers are. So would you start that in 2018 in preparation for 2019? Uh, yes, I would look to, uh, 
to update our, our current uh, bidders on the project and move forward immediately. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Paulson and then Councillor McClellan. I want this project done. <laughs> um, so just, if we put this back into, or take this out of this year, it's still something that's coming down the pipe for next year, right? And we uh, did an early approval for $175,000 and um, the actual bill could be anywhere between two hundred and fifty and three hundred and fifty thousand dollars is my math wrong right for the total project yes as it stands so again this is considering the existing technology we predict the um the emerging technology to be to be further on that scale so somewhere in that 300 ish range so is there a payback or return on on the new technology with in, the in, in energy savings or anything like that uh there's a I think from a risk management standpoint and a longevity standpoint, definitely. Um, so with the, the emerging technology we're considering at this stage with the, there's two components to, to it. First of all, with it being a spray chiller as opposed to a, um, a combined or an immersed chiller, um, the, the load of ammonia is far less than what we've currently got. So that's from a, from a risk standpoint is, and efficiency is a positive. Secondly, being titanium, the, the current models, what, uh, what our proponents are noticing is that corrosion is one of the, the major factors of, of failure. And of course, with the titanium product, we, we could be in the neighborhood as opposed to saying the product would last sometime somewhere in that 70 to 20 year range. It could reasonably, we could be looking at 25 to 40 years. So we'll be looking at a bill next year. Okay. Councillor McLennan, then Councillor Survey. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm having a problem with this one and, and a lot of the debate we've had, and, and that is that we're now being told we didn't have the, all the figures given to us and the, and the study wasn't done and the RFP wasn't done. Is that so? And if that's so, it shouldn't have come to us just yet and it's causing a long meeting tonight because of it mr mayor if i may um and so again just to reiterate while councillor mcclellan was out of the room that uh no we we approached the project uh in a prudent fashion as we always do um and the when we initially built the budget figures were based on going to our supplier that is now no longer quoting on the on that product so essentially the product that we were expecting to that line item in the budget of that 175 is obsolete and so it, I, it doesn't make sense in my mind uh, to look to move backward on technology and I think we need to balance risk which I think we're doing very well along with the best product that that we can get our hands on so in 25 or 40 years from now we don't need to keep talking about a chiller that we should have made a different decision on in 2018. Gotcha. Com Councillor Sobe. No, just in response to uh, Councillor Paulson asking the questions, is there any availability for grant into this new product or? Uh, some, so of course, as, uh, as Director Rothwell has outlined with uh, the carbon fund, it is eligible. Um, I'm not sure how that number may change based on that product. So with that specific chiller in mind, of course, we want to go after, after any grants we can. I would love to deplete uh, Director Rothwell's carbon trust fund. Um, but the short answer is we'd have to do more research to see exactly the amount we could obtain from the carbon trust fund or other grants. Okay, Councillor Washington, do you have any questions on this? Okay, then I'll call the question. Uh, again, recorded vote, uh, starting with Councillor McClemmon. I guess considering that, we gotta be in favor of it. Councillor Silve. In favor. Councillor Paulson. In favor. Councillor Washington. In favor, sir. I'm in favor, Councillor Minions. In favor. Councillor Alamani. In favor. Motion's carried. Okay, then that brings us, Council, to the next item, which is the Grandview Road Path. Uh, we have a suggested uh, motion in front of us in order to, CAO is proposing. Anybody wish to make this motion? I'll make it, Mr. Mayor. That the uh, Grand, 
Is that okay? Or? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, that the Grandview Road Path Project be added to the draft 2019 to 2023 financial plan with engineering design work for the project being undertaken in 2018 and staff directed to investigate grant funding opportunities to offset project cost and further that the $100,000 general revenue funding directed to be set aside on February 1st for this project be reallocated to capital projects in the 2018 financial plan. Okay, is there a seconder for the motion? Second, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilor McLennan? Yeah, I'm very opposed to this motion. I'm very opposed to the suggestion. You know, we have had a, a very, I've been up that road, I've walked it, I've driven it, and since the uh, people there, the, the residents came and talked to us, at first I felt we've only got a short stretch. So why are they worrying? Because it goes dead end out of the city. You cannot walk on that stretch without being in the traffic. The ditch is in such a place that you either get pushed into the ditch, you jump into the ditch, or hopefully the drivers will go away. Now, it's not a heavily trafficked road, but when it is driven, uh, it's driven quick. I've talked to residents, I've talked to, quite frankly, my grandson who walks to his great grandma's house up there, and at first he told me, well, it's all pretty good, and then the cars started coming. He says, well, it's good until the cars come. And uh, I appreciate, you know, what, what he told me, and uh, and that's what I based my that and some of the residents is what I based my motion on to leave the hundred thousand dollars there. It's not going to do the job, but uh, I, I think we should be looking at that sooner rather than later. And our liability increases, especially after we know about it. And to me, that's a very liable spot. Thank you. Uh, any other comment, Council? Councilor Minions? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I have a problem with this one as well. Um, I think when we went through the supplemental project list, um, we really went through and looked at um, you know, which items were safety concerns and which ones were not. Um, and I think although um, it was a very political process that brought us to the point of having this project um, on our list and it's gotten more difficult now that there are Grandview Road residents opposed to it. Um, I think that we decided to commit the funds to this because we felt it was a safety, pro a safety project and it was necessary. Um, I think that um, what we're dealing with, and I have a problem with the next um, suggestion as well, the gas tax funds, um, what we're looking at doing with this is putting off infrastructure spending um, to the future again we're already putting off the chiller project and maybe that makes sense because um, you know there's new technology we don't want to move on old technology but we're putting off a project with the chiller that was going to be a certain amount of money this year it's going to be even more money next year then we're going to put this off to next year and then we're going to draw down our gas tax funds um, below levels we maybe should be and I think what we're really dealing with here is just not having enough money to properly fund our infrastructure renewal um, and at the same time, we're creating new fences to maintain and, and other project or other infrastructure that we need to maintain as well. So I think we're putting ourselves in a really challenging position for the future. Um, I think if, if this is a safety priority, then we should be doing it now and not putting it off to next year. And I do feel somewhat like we're putting it off to next year because we don't want to make a politically difficult decision in an election year where we're going to have people mad at us either way, so we're putting it off to next year. Um, I think this is a safety decision, so we should do it this year. Okay. Any? Uh, I just, clear. just wanted to clarify the, the previous motion that Council had endorsed was not to actually do the project, but to set, set aside funds to do it and right, to proceed correct. with further engineering. So the project wasn't actually approved. Is this for the chiller? Is that what you're referring to? Oh, for, for Grandview Road was right. the previous Grandview motion Road. endorsed was to set aside a hundred thousand dollars in the capital reserve and refer the project for further engineering. Exactly. So we don't have the engineering yet, and we don't know what the actual costs are going to be. So it was just kind of a shot in the dark in terms of the hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment? Councillor Washington, you have a comment? Well, Mr. Mayor, I, I did, like you said, the other councils, I did go for the walkabout. Um, there is traffic, it is safe, and I think we should be more reactive than proactive. But, like the engineer, or the, they say the 100,000 won't do anything for us right now until we've actually got a, either um, a contractor going out there to give us some 
price if, if our, our own boys are too busy or having an engineer to go out and give us a price. So uh, as long as we address it in 2019, I'm okay with doing what we're doing. Okay, thank you. Um, just a clarification, um, um, Mr. Smith, the the actual our technicians uh, in engineering are they capable of of putting together des the design for this? So within their, yeah, within their. Oh, almost their certainly, they. We would just need to do a little if we stay with what is currently proposed, which is a gravel pathway behind the existing ditch. That's something we could refine uh, a little bit and, and be able to put a, a more accurate number uh, together. Uh, Mr. Takma could correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but I think based on something like that, we're, we're probably pretty close in that 100,000 range. And if we need to do a little bit of uh, work to refine that design, we could do that. Thank you, uh, Councillor Alleman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to vote uh, for the motion because um, in our uh, Food Security and Climate Disruption Committee report, uh, we have some suggestions in there that uh, that would potentially change perhaps how um, how our, our works department would deal with, with roads in general and design in general, um, and there's opportunities there. So the reason why I voted for the motion last time was because it was it was conditional on getting that in engineering um, you know, done and, uh, and seeing what designs are out there. Um, and I think, uh, you know, before we uh, commit to it, uh, I would like to have this be a, p a potential project where we could think of something different um, as far as how we, uh, how we do road building and, and sidewalks and, and all of that. So uh, I'll be voting for the motion. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Paulson, then Councillor McLeod. Just, uh, just want to make sure that uh, we, we have two options here, right? To create the side path or to do culvert and uh, and fill in the ditch. I'd, I'd like to look at both options. Okay. So, and Wilf can talk a little bit more about this. The the one that we based the rough the the hundred thousand budget estimate is is not fill, is not piping and filling in the ditch. That would be more expensive. If council. You know, if council wants to explore that option, then some additional engineering design work and budget estimates would have to be done. But I'm feeling pretty confident that's going to be more costly uh, than than uh, the path behind the ditch for certain. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Takma. Thank you. Uh, Councilor McClellan. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, not an engineer, but I've looked at it, and I think a culvert's the only way to go. Uh, we start filling in the ditch, digging another ditch. I can't see that be cheaper than, than putting in culverts. And uh, the side of the road on the west side uh, gets less water than the larger ditch on the east side. So if we culverted the west side, put the walkway there, and we wouldn't have to worry about uh, that wind throw we heard about uh, from one of the residents, and uh, it wouldn't have to go. The only difficulty I saw there was all the um, fire hydrants seemed to be partially in the ditch. I don't know how come that happened, but that's something that happens, I guess. And uh, so anyway, that's just my take on it, but I, it's something we've got to do, and, and uh, I, I got a problem delaying it much longer. I believe our crews can do it, but uh, that's that. Okay, thank you. Anything else, Council? Then on those on the motion, I'll uh, call a recorded vote on it. Uh, Councillor McLennan? Opposed. Councillor Sobey? In favor. Councillor Paulson? In favor. Councillor <coughs> Washington? I'm in favor, Councillor Minions. In favor. Councillor Alamani. In favor. Motion's carried. Okay, and Council, we have one last item. That's uh, gas tax. What to do with uh, $111,000 in gas tax. Somebody prepared to make that motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. That the $111,000 unallocated, 
unallocated gas funds be allocated to the 2018 budget for capital? Councillor Washington, uh, do you want to second that motion? I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. There we go. All the way from Florida. Uh, discussion, Council. Councillor McClemon. So the way I read this, we are now have no reserve left for 2018. Is that correct, I think Director we were very short-sighted in doing what we did on Sixth Avenue, but we did it. It's voted. Good luck. There's still a cushion of between eighty and ninety thousand in gas tax funds after the one hundred and eleven. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Minions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't agree with drawing down our reserves. I, I actually agree somewhat with Councillor McClemon on this, except um, the reasoning being different. I, I think we. We either need to increase our taxes a little bit or um, pull out some of the projects that we voted for. Um, I certainly don't agree on 6th Avenue, but um, at the end of the day, I think we've, um, we either need to just accept that we're not taxing at a reasonable level um, to do all the things we feel we need to do, or we need to change our scope of what we feel we need to do. Um, and I think that there, um, at some point we need to make hard decisions and if it's not this council it'll be the next or the next or the next but um, the funding needs to happen at some point okay anything else councillor Alleman thank you mr. mayor yeah I completely agree with councillor minions um, our staff has done an incredible job to uh, cut down a 400,000 uh, shortfall down to 111 um, I think that's something that the taxpayers can uh, except as you know we need to invest into this capital infrastructure it's something tangible um, and uh, they're going to see tangible results from it um, even if it's not this year it's going to be next year and, and moving forward so um, I think hundred and eleven thousand dollars is uh, is more than acceptable okay um, Councillor Washington do you have anything you want to say no, sir, I'm good, thanks. anybody else okay on the motion, again, recorded vote. Councillor McClemon. I'm gonna vote for it, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, Councillor Sobe. In favor. Councillor Paulson. I'll vote in favor. <coughs> Councillor Washington. In favor, sir. I'm in favor, Councillor Minions. Against. And Councillor Alamani. Against. Motion's carried. Okay, Council, that brings us then to uh, this point where we provide additional direction and the first additional direction I think we need to consider is are some early approvals. Um, we have some, um, some motions that we passed and we're in a situation where some of our uh, budget areas need, uh, need access to their, their money now and just so that, uh, so that you know. Um, there are there are three principal um, areas that we need to be able to get working on um, based on the decisions we've made to this point. One, two of them relate to um, our railway and McLean's Mill. So one is uh, ninety-five thousand dollars for McLean's Mill capital expenditure, and the other one is thirty-one thousand dollars for the railway insurance, and then the. The third item is the money uh, for bylaw that we approved, and uh, we've got some significant work that has to be done if we're going to go uh, ahead on that. Um, so my suggestion to council is that you consider early early approvals on those uh, three items. I, I think we we could make it right away. City clerk, are you just wanting to record the motion? Or are you um, wanting to eventually, say Mr. Mayor, but I, I would, um, I think council might want to consider first of all directing staff to prepare the five-year financial plan if you're um, the you bylaw. Wanna, you want to do that before the early approval? Well, I think if council gives direction for staff to go ahead and prepare the bylaw, then that would sort of indicate um, that we could then consider some early approvals on some other items. All right. Well, in that case, let's just uh, hold that thought on the early approvals. We'll bring that after. Council, then this would be the time to bring back uh, uh, direction for, for staff to bring back a five-year financial plan bylaw. I'll second that motion, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilor McClemon, you wish to say something? No, you okay? Well, I was, yeah, I have another motion to make after you've done that. Okay. 
in that case, the motion has been moved and seconded to bring back the five-year financial plan bylaw. So again, uh, let's just make sure we've got a recorded vote. Councillor McClellan? Four. So, Councillor Sobe? In favor. Councillor Paulson? In favor. Councillor Washington? In favor, sir. I'm in favor. Councillor Minions? Against. And Councillor Alamang? Against. The motion's carried. And then, Council, that then brings us to the early approvals. We have those three items uh, to consider. So we can make it however you want to make it. We can make it in three or we can make it one at a time. Mr. Mayor, it might help Council if we go by numbers on the, um, on the sheet in front of you there. So we're looking at numbers 15, 16, 27, 28, and 29. And the purpose, Mr. Mayor, of, of um, request for early approval is if Council is, is ready now to um, consider bylaws on this draft budget, then you might also, uh, and so you're reasonably uh, confirmed on these. Um, some of these projects um, we think we need to get moving on sooner than later. So McLean Mill Capital projects, that would be um, some, uh, primarily some rail maintenance work before the season and the rail insurance as well. Okay, and sorry, the last two were 27 and 29? 27, 28, and 29. That's the bylaw piece. I'll, I'll package up the 15 and 16 and just move for those two. Okay, so that's 95,000 plus the 31,000? Yeah. Okay, is there a seconder for that? I'll second it. Any discussion? Uh, Again, because we're away, let's do the uh, recorded vote. Uh, Councillor McClellan? Favor. Councillor Sobe? In favor. Councillor Paulson? In favor. Councillor Washington? In favor, sir. I'm in favor. Councillor Minions? In favor. And Councillor Alamani? In favor. Motion's carried. Okay, then we have the, the bylaws related to, um, to sorry, the, the early approval related to bylaws. I'll move early approval of 27, 28, and 29. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay. That's uh, any discussion? Okay. By recorded vote, Councillor McClellan? Favor. Councillor Sobe? In favor. Councillor Paulson? Against. I'm not against uh, adding bylaw, but I am against the package just presented. Too expensive. Okay. Councillor Washington? I'm in favor, Councillor Minions. In favor. And Councillor Alamani. In favor. Motion's carried. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Council. Um, before we adjourn, I want to, uh, sorry, we, I know that Councillor McClemon has something to say, so I'll let Councillor McClemon make his motion before I make my closing statements. Yeah, I have two motions, Mr. Mayor, one of them relating to the budget, a and I'd like to move that the, uh, city staff and I don't want to give a name to this <laughs> job particularly because if we're hiring a new engineer type um, consider using uh, the city works crew to do the uh, sixth avenue job uh, particularly uh, it, that's the motion if it's a seconder I'll talk on it is not and I won't take any more time <laughs> um, the, the city crews have done long jobs before and, and big ones and possibly when we get the uh, new employee there'll be another chance but what I was actually thinking of I, I thought earlier about and one of the reasons I was opposing going extra long on 6th Avenue was the contracts and the contractors if we can do it and if our crews can do it it may be cheaper and it may not uh, and uh, it, it may be the only way we can get it done if we're as busy as everyone tells me we are. So that's my mo first motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Councillor Paulson? I just have a quick question, uh, Mr. Takla. Do we have capacity? CAO? 
Mr. Mayor, um, it's not that our workers don't want to do the work. Both engineering and works crews really want to build. Uh, they want to build the community, and I respect that. I really do. Um, we just don't have the capacity. We are we are maxed out doing the maintenance work that we do and a number of other contract or construction jobs. Um, this is a big job, and we just don't have the the number of personnel to do it. That's the issue here. But I do respect the fact that they want to do it. Councillor Allenin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I, I don't think we can, as our staff said, I don't think we can handle it because we don't have we don't have the the people power in here. Um, but I would love to see a day where we would actually hire back into our city works and and build up the capacity in our city so that we could do our own work rather than always contracting out. Councillor McClellan. Yeah, the motion was to consider it and see if we can, and then that wasn't to do it. Um, Councillor Washington, you have a question? No, sir, I'm good, thank you. Okay, then I'll call the question. Uh, Councillor McClemon? Favor. Councillor Sobe? In favor. Councillor Paulson? Yeah, I'm in favor too. Councillor Washington? In favor, sir. I'm opposed. Councillor Minions? In favor. Councillor Alamani? In favor. Okay, the motion passes. And I'd like to make a notice of motion, Mr. Mayor. Okay. That we uh, consider two properties as nuisance properties. One of them, the former, uh, I'm gonna get my names wrong, I'm gonna mix them up, Barlow's uh, building. Uh, at the back, it's really bad. And the other one is the, the residence and property at the corner of uh, River Road and Russell Place. And I will get the address for the uh, City clerk by tomorrow and email it. And those two I'd like to consider as nuisance properties and they have caused quite a bit of grief. A complaint which came in a letter tonight. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sobe? Uh, this motion is not to declare them nuisance but for staff to investigate? It's just a notice, notice of motion. motion. Okay, perfect, thank declare you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, uh, Councilor McClemon. And Council, thank you very much for your, uh, your time and your energy and your devotion to this, uh, this process. And staff, thank you so much for your, all your incredible work getting us to this point. Uh, just before we close, I'd like to congratulate uh, Councilor Sove for uh, his engagement uh, uh, over his holiday. Uh, it's, and he, he, he went and he met and he communed with Mickey Mouse. And you know, this is, this is good. This is good. Councillor Sobe, uh, we wish you well, and uh, we're looking forward to the, the announcement and when you're actually uh, going to be wed. Okay, so Council, then uh, a motion to adjourn the meeting is in order. So moved. All in favor? Councillor Washington? Okay, enjoy the rest of your holiday, Councillor Washington. What's the weather like?